Hey guys, this is Metaverse Jedi. Real quick, I'd just like to say that this is not financial advice, and this is purely for educational and entertainment purposes only, as well as I'm mainly showcasing projects that I'm already currently invested in, so do keep that in mind. So if I do have a bias towards it, that might be present. Um, I just want to be as real with you guys as I can. Enjoy the video. ...become, you know, who slash what is alpha. Um... Why is she trying to save human consciousness? More importantly for me, and this is like, I kind of go into my stories. I'm just like, you know, how does, how does Alpha even define human consciousness? And then where is Alpha today and, and or Hunter? And you can go into that. So um, I want to give you guys the floor to talk about the story that is AVAX Warriors um, around, around the lore that you've, you've built and those questions that I just asked. And I can repeat them later whenever you guys need. Yeah, that'll be helpful. <laughs> um, we, it's a really good topic to talk about actually. Um, and there's, it's purposefully designed to be as open to interpretation um, for to for the listener or the reader, um, we we do have obviously a clear story that we want to convey, um, but we also want you know the imag the imagination to be sparked a little bit. So I'm glad that that's that's done that for you. I hope it has done for others as well. Um, me, I wish the other um, one of the other colleagues was here to talk about it a bit more. And as he's the the writer of the law, um, he's a close friend of mine, um, have been for a very long time now. Um, and it's always been, we always have conversations, it's the two best friends, me and this other guy that's working on this project that writes the law. And we always have very good conversations with each other about these types of things, um, human consciousness, where the world is going, the world that we see right now, and the kind of politics that's happening at the moment, and the kind of circumstances that other people are in around the world that may not be so fortunate as uh, people like us in the West um, or other places in the world. Um, and we, we don't want the law to be political. We don't want it to dissuade anyone by putting any opinions in about the world. What we want it to do is to bind people together um, around a, a commonality that we all have. And uh, it, uh, we will progress that over time um, as the writer gets more into depth about the story. So that's the kind of purpose of why we want to do it. Um, we also believe that stories are just a great way to engage people with a project, um, especially with the Warriors project that has this kind of the, the art style that we chose. Um, having a story, you know, backs up and personifies each image that we have produced, each warrior that we've produced. Um, I will yield now if Silent wants to talk a bit more about this as he's been doing a lot of the artwork <laughs> no, I, no i really like i mean i feel, I feel like the whole team is super passionate about the whole story as well um so yeah, it's also one of the most funnest part in my opinion like creating a whole this whole world and story and it uh with every like the further like we, we go like the deeper it gets and the more things like we want to put out so that like we really want to build out this huge story basically and it started with a very um simple plot i'd say like, or like i mean for those who don't know i'm, I'm guessing most of the people who have read the lore already that know okay alpha is this uh, ai being which has been created by isaac uh this crazy scientist and yeah, this uh, the whole thing is basically a story of their adventures um, against Megacorp trying to save humanity, basically. And I feel like it's very, I mean, yeah, like uh, 
Wave said early already, like it's the, the art and the lore just go, there's a really nice synergy between them, I think. How, um, or like the, the writer and me as the artist as well, I feel like we are feeding off each other. Like, so sometimes an artwork would inspire something and also in the other way around, if I'd read something which hasn't been public, like if I if read something and I'd get inspired with an idea, I feel like it's really, it's a really nice uh, flow of things and we're i mean personally me i'm like the most excited to build out this whole story because i feel like there's a lot of potential i love yeah. that um you know one one thing that was said was was how you guys spend time really digging into the story itself right and, and they're they're your own opinions right you have you have a base story to, to to go from and then what that story was centered around human consciousness and that uh mm. what is human what is human consciousness more specifically and then the parallels with some of the changes that are that are going on to today i, I you know like in, in today's times um even the and i always mess up the name it's like megalocorp like what is the what is the entity that everybody's fighting megacorp yeah <laughs> Mega, megacorp yeah um, this, this idea of like a nation state is actually now a company, right? Um, and kind of what mm -hmm. we're going through to that. And now there's people, there's entities, whether they be AI entities or human entities are trying to rise up against that, right? And then this idea of many, many beings in one or one being in many, if that makes sense, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I really love that idea. And it's kind of what, what hooked me. I was just like, wait a minute, this can go so many different directions. People can turn this into a, a very political story or they can turn this into a, like a spirituality story. Um, they could turn this into like a Dune fantasy of sorts, like if they really wanted to, like what happens when the different warriors, do they create factions against each other even though they're a part of the same entity? Like there's so many things that really got me excited about the, the possibilities of, of kind of what, what's being what's happening so quick question and is there and this might not be the right question to ask um because it's so open where is everybody today and what is the mission for to like it, it at, at its current time right because allure is coming from a very specific place but then you know, as things are being built out within your roadmap, and we're going to talk about some of the technical things that are going on with the project itself, you know, where is Hunter Thomas today? Where is Alpha today um, relative to the NFTs that are on the platform? Um, yeah, I don't want to, like, say too much, <laughs> but um, basically with all of these different chapters which we've been releasing, it's... Uh, it's like like they have traveled basically back in time, I guess, and he's like document and hunters documenting all these things which has happened so far. So I mean, they're basically documenting it from the future. All, all most of these, uh, I mean, all like his blogs, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know really how to answer that because it's. Uh, yeah, I was trying I to squeeze an alpha out of you. Actually, that's that's really what I said. Because like <laughs> I was, I was seeing and I was seeing where the story goes, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Um, so th that's the reason why I wanted to ask. So I'll I'll, I'll let you guys live um, <laughs> there. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, thanks for kind of just setting the stage of kind of what is the what is the the, the kind of like how you guys are thinking about it. I can tell immediately that you guys are thinking about the project and you're thinking about the story and it's not just like a cash grab. Um, can we just talk about who, who who actually is on the team, you know, kind of the background of the team um, and kind of how you guys got there? I'm not sure if everybody's doxxed, but just kind of the background around the team. Um, sure. Yes. Yeah, go on, Salam. I, uh, so I met uh, Zen Porter, one of our devs, um, online and we had I've been like sharing my work and we were just talking about uh, um, yeah my work and stuff like in the robots and science fiction and we hit it off pretty well and in the end he basically set up the team together and we, I mean, we had this idea like we could uh, 
make a collection out of this and something bigger. Because um, he was also a bit like really liked um, my work as well, especially all the robots and also science fiction fan. And yeah, he set up the team with the other developers and marketing expert. Yeah. Awesome. How many people in total are on the team? We are uh, four. And that's split between like a designer um, or not a designer, like an illustrator, I assume, um, a marketing person, the lore master, and then is what, who else is like kind of the roles within that team? Um, it's, I would love to have uh, that many people in that many roles. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's two engineers, myself and uh, Zen Porter. Silent, the designer, obviously, who also produces illustrations for us um, and contributes heavily towards the law. Um, we have our marketing and writer, so in one person, and that's the four. And obviously the alpha AI that is floating in our Discord. Um, I'm not going to mention if that's another person or not, but... Consider it fine. Come on, man. I was, uh, was going to ask. That was going to be my next question, right? Like, kind of where is Alpha? Because, you know, she's, you know, I, I, she's, she's in the chats, man. She's, in, she's, in, she's engaging. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask if that was a team member. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let it go. Um, one thing that I know, right? So, like, right now, at this moment, I'm looking at your Discord. I'm in the Warrior chat. And I, Alpha just gave me some some eyes, by the way. Um, and it, it's really a testament to the community that you've built, right? I see your community really, really active. It's one of the most active, like really engaged uh, Discord communities that I've seen. Um, to the point where it's like we're a little jealous, right? Lost Worlds, you know, we're doing this concept of local, you know, location-based NFTs, NFTs in the real world, and people are super excited about it, but we realize building a community on Discord is really, really, really hard. But you, your team has really nailed it. Um, and, you know, I just want to give you guys your props there. How did you build that community? How did you get such an active base to, to really support your project in this way? Uh, I think it's a... I think it's a con, but it's, it's really difficult to pin it down to one thing that we did. There's no secret ingredient to creating the, you know, the quality of community that we have, which we're all super proud of. Um, I think the key contributors were, <laughs> even then it's hard to say what they are. It's the artwork that we have. We feel it, it, it's a, I don't want to say a game changer, that might be too arrogant, but we haven't seen something of this quality. And when I mean quality, I'm keeping that fairly fluffy um, in like NFT space, particularly on AVAX, um, but even on other chains as well. A lot of projects use, you know, simpler artwork. Even if it's 3D, it's still a simplified version. We kind of went all in with these warriors, like, and there's lots of grueling times of during the rendering process. Um, it, so it's that. And I, I feel personally, I'm not sure how others in my team feel about it, but I feel that the law was a huge contributor to us. Uh, building this quality community by having that content and the story um, bef all the way up from like inception of the project all the way through till now um, has been something that people have been able to constantly engage with um, and understand you know the project and use their imagination to buy into to this as a whole and that's what we're super proud of and i think they're the two for me the two big contributors to us building such a great community 
I was about to say also, I think, I think the lore is really is something where everyone can also like, yeah, like you said, it's super easy to, I mean, for everyone to engage in. And uh, it feels like you're, you're in this, I don't know. I feel, I mean, for me also, it feels like we're all in this together, like in a mission against Megacorp and stuff, like you get super carried away. Um, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's super nice also to have a community who cares so much about like the story as well and the art. And like, I'm so, so like grateful for that as well. That I, I think it's uh, like amazing. Yeah. That everyone really genuinely wants to know like, oh, what's going to happen next. And there's like, even us as team, and, like the team's also always super excited for the next like lore drop and stuff and trying to like figure out oh, like what's going to happen next and stuff. And, and yeah, super exciting, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting here just watching the Discord go nuts right now. I love Hunter, I love Alpha, and everybody is just kind of really engaged and living in in the world, right? Um, and and I love that. I love that. I love that as a whole. Um, and it actually it, it's an extension, right? Because from my understanding, you know, as you deepen the experience of 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 the project a lot of it will come through discord is that is that correct right so like and i don't i don't want to preclude one thing versus the other but it's to say that a lot of whether it be missions or the engagement will will happen through discord or will that also happen through um other means right because again your community is ridiculous and ridiculously engaged um but yeah i just want to know a little bit more about that as well um i i think we want to explore as many channels of engagement for our community as we can um so yes discord is you know going to be a, a contributor towards everything we do including law um and upcoming features and benefits for the owners of warriors i mean like you know the holders of warriors um but uh, that won't limit us I, we don't believe that Discord is, you know, the one place that we're going to use to engage everyone. Um, having experimented with new channels of engagement for um, our community is something that we want to do um, and may have already started. Um, yeah, if, that, if that's a good answer. I, I like that alpha. So, you know, may or may have not started already towards other forms of engagement. Um, I wonder what that could mean. I'm sure the Discord will tell us in like two seconds. Um, but I, I, I love that. You know, so, so far what we've talked about, right, you guys really showed us how important the lore is to the team, how you, you think about it open-endedly, right, which gives so much possibilities for those of us who really want to engage with the platform, you already had us sold beforehand with the quality of the NFTs in themselves, right? The, 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 those 4K drops. Um, and, but the next thing that I really want to understand is the evolution of the project. So, you know, we have these, these warriors, people, ha people have bought them, people own, and they're building their armies. Um, where, what's happening next? um for for the community uh for, with the actual nfts um i see something about the workshops but more specifically let's talk about the roadmap over the next you know three to six months sure i will briefly touch on the workshop just um as a reminder to small teams that are working on projects uh, remaining agile um, in what to decide to build and when to decide to build um, features and new products. We, ha we had to remain, and we do have to remain agile and make decisions on the fly in the best interest of our community members. Um, so I'll, I'll go into workshop for a little bit and then we can touch on the rest of the roadmap. So... For those that aren't aware, I'm sure most people are, we didn't sell out 100% um, and we asked the community what should happen should we not sell out. 
um, and they voted to burn. So, which we're totally fine with. That's what they wanted. Um, and actually, we're kind of excited to do that. Then, so we did the burn. Um, and again, saying agile, we decided how else can we utilize this story that we've come up with for the reason for the burn for future, um, which is where the workshop idea came from. The idea being that we noticed that the customers, our customers, wanted, you know, good assets or good assets in quotes. They're all good to me. But, you know, shiny swords, colorful swords, rare skins that look like great. Um, and there was a bunch of warriors that didn't have those qualities, but are still important to the whole law in general. There's a reason why the allocations that we had set out um, in the 888 amount of warriors. Um, so the workshop is intended to make the warriors a bit more deflationary than they already are based uh, from the mint, um, which I think has been taken well, very well by the community members that we've got. And this will set us on a pathway for hopefully changing the way that we view NFTs and that others in the um, NFT space sees how NFTs can be done. Um, so we're calling this workshop season one um, as a give back to the community uh, by making it deflationary and to spend some of their warriors to upgrade one of their warriors uh, to be better than it is. And the idea being that that's season one, and as we evolve over the next six months, year, uh, we'll be pushing out more seasons uh, to the community um, and new upgrade features that we are working on. Uh, so that's the workshop piece. Question before you move on yeah. from the, the workshop, because I'm just really curious about something. And this is more like... I guess inside baseball or just a genuine curiosity that I have as, as somebody who's building in the space and a builder in the space. And I guess it could be a question for the other builders, you know, your project didn't fully mint, all right. Uh, on launch or did it milk out? It, how did that, how did you guys um, take that initially? Like what was the, what was the feeling? And then how did you make that transition to, to understand where did you seek counsel in terms of, of getting to the workshops, right? Because you, you mentioned very, very importantly, right? That teams need to be agile and they need to be able to adjust. Um, and the way you guys are, have adjusted, um, I could tell just by your the way your community engages, it was the, is the right decision and you did something right. So I kind of just want to want to be like a, a fly in the wall right during during those moments like how did you guys take it and then what was the process towards making that decision yeah silent do you want to talk about this one um i've feel like i've been talking for a while and haven't let you spoke no so good um no i think i think what was really um a big factor is that we i mean we decided to let the community vote on it because we felt like in in that certain stage like we even as a team weren't really uh, couldn't really come to a decision like yeah we're we gonna leave it open or we're we gonna burn, and so we decided it would be the best and also um, yeah the right call for let the, to let the community vote on it as well, and I think uh, in the end yeah I mean like it it, it pays off like if, if you're just agile like and you you in you can also make it. Uh, work in your way you know like narrative way like narrative wise and stuff i feel like we've gotten also new ideas like this with this bozzy and uh mega corpse burn attack and stuff so i i think it's super cool actually uh, of course the first initial thought is like oh no the full collection is not going to be 
done, you know, like we've put so much work into all these warriors, but I think at the end of the day, you have to be, you can't become attached to um, single ones and uh, look at it in the long run. It's, I, I think it's actually amazing. Yeah. And it's opened us up to like more ideas, things like workshop and stuff and other features. Also keeping it uh, connected to the lore all the time. I think it's super exciting. Yeah, thank you for that. I think that was like that's a that's an amazing answer, and it just it it really speaks back to, you know, just the genuine belief of the project and the support that you have within your community. And and I didn't mean to to interrupt. Kind of the the second part of that question was just like, okay, so we you put something in place, um, you have a strong community, you know, now these NFTs are deflationary, so in essence, there's probably more value to them over time with them what are what else should we be looking out for over time you know what 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 is the the world that is avax warriors what does it turn into over the next couple of months um so the next item on our roadmap which we always intended to do which is on the back burner still in the on like still doing it um workshop has taken over a bit of a priority for now uh, at least for this week or two weeks um, as we're writing code and understanding what um, new skins and new assets that we want to have in this season one of workshop. But the next big item, which is on the roadmap, is our Warrior World merch store. Uh, we are already uh, engaging with some suppliers of uh, printed products, uh, physical products that can be shipped worldwide, um, getting a few samples sent to us to for us to just vet the quality of them, um, speaking with them about you know what volumes we expect. Um, and after we've done that workshop, that will be our next priority to get to get on board. Um, with some one of one merch items and the potential of having some generic warrior world merch uh, though we're unsure if that if that's going to work for our community members yet and um, so our primary fo prim primary focus on that merch store is unique one of one prints and we don't really I'm of the opinion that we don't want just like paper printed and framed. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a good idea though. It might be an option that we provide. Um, we're looking at a more robust item for that uh, printing of the warrior um, to hang on a wall or something. Um, and we will be reaching out to the community after workshop to have a feel of what they might like to see in the merch store um, and how we can bring more benefits for the merch store for the holders of uh, the AVEX Warriors. Awesome. So I have a question just like, I guess it's more of a, of an ecosystem question or an NFT ecosystem question in terms of how do you, you, you guys view yourself, right? You know, the Avalanche ecosystem has really been in this push towards GameFi, right? The, the, the chain itself kind of supports it um, and, and people are taking to it. Um, and you guys have been talking about this, pro you guys have been, we've known about you for a little while now before that really, really took off. But you have a lot of interactions um, or there's lots of things that are being planned and, and, and with the project and with the NFTs to create different forms of interactions. And I wanted to kind of get an understanding of where do you, you guys find yourselves um, in the, the GameFi NFT spectrum of anywhere from a PFP project that has some form of utility to eventually becoming a full-fledged, you know, gaming ecosystem where you know maybe there's a token in that like what is your team's perspective on that I'm, and maybe you know you guys are still discussing it but just generally speaking where is do you see avax warriors be moving deeper into the game five space uh we 
do, which is where I was kind of implying workshop may end up going. Um, we haven't fully finalized like the full concept of how we get into that space. Um, but it's definitely on our interest, or on all, all of our team members' interest.